Hey, Nolly Williams here. Welcome back to the podcast. Now, in today's episode of the podcast, I am going to teach you how to succeed at a higher level with listings. Now, listings are the name of the game, okay? If you are in the real estate game, I know you are, you want to start focusing on listings. If you haven't already started focusing on listings or you want to start focusing more on listings, this episode is for you. In this episode, I'm going to share with you the top 10 reasons why you should be focusing on listings and you should make listings the thing that you do for the rest of your career. You'll definitely want to take notes. You'll want to um, open your mind, expand your mind, be open-minded because this is the kind of information that your subconscious needs to hear in order to build your belief around listings. Listings is the name of the game. In an up market, listings. In a down market, listings. And in the market that we're coming into right now, where you're going to need more skills, listings is the name of the game. It's what's gonna differentiate you from every other agent in town. All right, enjoy the podcast. Welcome to the Success With Listings podcast, where we help you get success in the real estate game the easy way. Now you can get off the roller coaster of feast and famine and out of the rat race of competing with every other agent in town. Hi, I'm Nolly Williams. I took over a thousand listings during my first 10 years in the real estate game. And in this podcast, I show you how to have success with listings. Let's go. Um, now, why listings? What, what percentage of your business do you think should be focused on listings? Anybody ever read The Millionaire Real Estate Agent? Yeah. What's in here? Is this water? Coconut water? Plain water. Mm. I want some coconut water. Anybody like coconut water? I used to hate it. Depends on the brand, really? What's the best brand? I don't know. <laughs> I haven't found one. I just I drink it. I, I used to hate coconut water. Hate it, hate it, hate it. My dad grew up in, in Trinidad. He was Caribbean. So he liked all this stuff, crap, I was going to say. Coconut water, mangoes, all that. But now I love it. Now I love it. So what percentage of your business should be focused on listings, do you think? 60%. 60%. Who else? 75%. Who else? Any, any guesses? 100%. There's no wrong answer in, this, in my class. In my class, there's no wrong answer. 100%. This is what Gary Keller... See, I was brainwashed when I got into real estate. I was completely brainwashed. I was told that I needed to focus on listings, and I needed to make it my... All this stuff. And I just... I didn't know any better. Nobody taught me anything different, so I just did that. So here's what Gary says. He says, there's, there are so many great reasons to devote... How much? Um, All of your time and effort to take into marketing listings. Make listings your primary focus. So I read that, guys, and I just believed it. And I just went out and did it. That's, so I focused 96% of my, my business has been listings. So reason number one, we're going to get into 10, list, 10 reasons. Seller listings mean more opportunities, more marketing, and more branding. So what that means is you get to put your sign in the yard, and you get to... Uh, Market the listing through direct mail and all that. So all that is is every time that you, and you guys know all this stuff already, but I'm going to remind you, every single time you get a listing, you get to market yourself. Okay? When you get a new buyer, do you market yourself because you have a new buyer? Do you have a sign somewhere that says, I have a new buyer? No. When you get, see that sign in the yard, you know what it says? It says that the, the Smiths are trusting me with the sale of their house. Maybe you should too. Just a hint. Right, so it's it's a it's a big hint when you put that that sign in the yard. I remember when I did when I did my very first sign, and I've been into graphic design for a long time, and I had my record label. I was into doing graphic art for the you know uh, stuff like that, and so when I did my first sign, I wanted the big cowboy hat on it. You know, I wanted that the big you know if you've seen my stuff, my 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 pictures everywhere. People are like, man, are you big head? Are you? I'm like, no, but I like to have that that cowboy on there you know and so like I, I i treat myself almost like an alter ego like sometimes i even talk to my talk about myself in the third person you ever you ever met anybody like that the weird weird people you know i'm, I'm kind of weird that way so when they when they did my sign um he had my picture kind of s- small on there i said no we got to bump that up so he bumped it up he said is that good i said no 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 we need to be bigger because when you're looking at your, at your proofs on a computer screen, you know how sometimes it's so small? So it didn't look like, it looked like a business card on the, on, on the thing. 
Well, finally he got it to where my chin was at the bottom of the sign and my hat was at the very, you know, the very top of the sign. And I was wearing my big cowboy hat. I don't have that on today. Um, and I said, there we go. He was like, and, and this is God's honest truth. The word for sale was not even on the sign. Didn't, it didn't fit, right? People call me up, is this a rental? Like, no, 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 it's for sale, it's for sale. We just didn't have any room. He said, Nolly, what about the phone number? I said, make it tiny print. I want the picture big. So that's what he did. So when I got the, the signs in, I got them in and I looked, ooh, it scared me. I, I got shocked. Because the big old head, I'm talking about big headed. <laughs> you talk about big headed. And because the way the hat, anyway, it was, it was, it was sad. So I would, the last thing I did when I went to a listing, this, this honest truth, the last thing I did was I would put the sign in. Because they say, Nolly, we're going to put the sign out? No, 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 we'll get to it, we'll get to it. And it was the last thing I did when I was on my way out. I put the sign in and then drive off. And then, who's this big old sign in my yard? You think you're running for mail around here? What's this thing? Get this thing out of my yard. You know? It was crazy. But I finally got used to them. They look real good from about, about two blocks away. They look real nice. Real nice. But that's the thing, guys. And, and even to this day, that's what I do. I have my, I have, and you guys should, should use your picture more. Anybody afraid to use your picture? Don't raise your hand. But I'm just saying, use your picture more. And also, get into video. You know, a lot of times when, when I see your picture on a card, or your picture, or your picture, you know what I think in my mind? I could trust that person. Why do we do that? It's just something we do as human beings. It's just part of being human, right? Now, reason number two. You get more control of your time. How many of y'all know you get more control of your time when you're working with sellers, okay? Sellers are very respectful. Most of the time, they won't call you nights and weekends unless you set up the, 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 the precedent that it's okay for them to do that, you know? A lot of times, they'll, when, a, when a seller calls me after five, you know what the first thing they do? They apologize. When's the last time a buyer called you, for, you know, nights and weekends? And probably, it's not going to happen. Reason number three, seller, seller listings maximize your per hour compensation your per hour compensation. Um, and, and I learned this, that you can actually work 20, 25 sellers, not that you would want to, but it, it, you know, what your goals are, your goals. Okay, I'm gonna help you reach your goals. You don't have to wanna do 100 deals a year. You, you might say, man, that, I don't ever wanna do that. That's fine. Whatever you wanna do, you should be doing that. You should be reaching your goals. But you can work three times as many sellers in the same span of time as buyers. Now, reason number four, volume. Okay, it's kind of what we just talked about. Um, th this one is more your per hour compensation because here's, here's what I found, guys. This is real important for you to understand this. I use a 46-step listing system. Okay, 46-step listing system. <clears throat> what I've found is that I only personally have to do between three and five of those steps. And if you look in my book, I, I, I put all the steps in there. There's only three to five of those steps. All the other steps are delegatable. Because the, the truth is, mo a listing is very administrative intensive. Okay? So 91.3% of all the duties that go into it, every listing you take can be delegated. Now, whether you'll delegate them or not is up to you. Okay? And some of you guys don't delegate nothing. Right? You want to do everything. And, and that, that's, that's a way of being. And maybe you don't need to delegate because you don't have your volume up to the point where it's necessary. Does that make sense? So, so it's, it's kind of your choice. Uh, four, volume, we talked about that. Five, increase market awareness. Every single time that you do a listing, you've got to study the market to do that listing, right? You've got to look at the comps. Now, you do that some with buyers, but if you're doing a lot of listings, you are real market aware. And you start to understand things before they occur. Like, you start to know things like, hey, this neighborhood is trending up, or this neighborhood's trending down, or I think this is what's going to happen. You start intuitively knowing things like that. Reason number six is that listings will bring you more business. How many of y'all want more buyers? You want more buyers? Nothing wrong with it. Yeah? If you want more buyers, what's the number one way to get more, more buyers? Have an open house. Have open house. Get more listings. If you have more listings, you will generate more buyers. Okay? Now, reason number seven, if a deal falls, you just simply pop it back active. Okay? I work buyers. I still work buyers. I was out this week showing property to buyers. Okay, they're in the 700000 range. Thank you. What's the average sale price here, by the way? More or less. 350 Okay, so pretty good, pretty good. Do, does anybody know how many transactions were done at the local level last year? Any idea? How many were sold? Yeah, how many were closed, like closed transactions? We can, we can come back to that. Just, just a curiosity. I like, sometimes I like to run statistics just so I know what the market is. But... 
380? Okay. 300, 885. 300, 885. Okay. The median. Median. Where we come from, it's a lot less. <laughs> oh, a lot less? Okay, tell me about that. 175. 175? Yeah. Where, where are y'all from? Pueblo, south of here. Oh, nice. I think so 191, 191 is what it was. Oh, just did it 191. Up, it wasn't like 135. Okay. So it's 191? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Um, hey, I mean, in Austin, you, well, I mean, everything years ago, right, was because I remember back, I would, I would list a house anywhere. It didn't matter to me. If it was a $40,000 house, in fact, when I first got in the business, that they, I was the joke of the office. They would just throw stuff at me because they knew I would do it. They're like, oh, in fact, I was on, I, I overheard this. It was a true story. Uh, an agent, a friend of mine, he was on a call and he was, he was talking it up, man. He was, get, he was reeling this guy in, seller. And he says, what's the price? How much again? What are you asking? Could you repeat that one more time? He says, oh, he says, you know what? We've got a guy in our office that works really good in that price range. His name's Nolly Williams. Well, you know, it was something under 30000 because where I started, it was a, we actually moved south, a smaller town. I had a lot of listings on for $39,900. The, the scripture says don't despise small beginnings. Because the work that you do, how many of you know that you'll put more work into a deal that's $200,000 than you will a $700,000 deal? Yeah. You will. You will put in more work. And I, I, and I know because I've gotten both of those under contract this week. I got a 200 and I got a 700 under contract. And the 700 was just frankly easy. I can communicate with the sellers better. They understand what I'm saying. I don't have to pull my language back. You, know, you, you see what I mean? So, and if a deal falls, you simply pop it back active. Now, if, if your buyer deal falls, what happens? Oh, you got to hit the pavement. Yeah. You got to get, you got to hit, you just, but, but when a seller deal falls, you just, it's a keystroke. Right? You just stroke the key, an MLS, it's back on the market. Who's next? Right? Now, that's reason seven. Reason eight, you can run your business from anywhere. Run your business from anywhere. And this is what my wife and I have done. Um, I still do listings and I still do buyers. I just don't really advertise them because I say I call myself retired in 2015 when I paid off everything. I'm like, I'm done. I'm all right. I don't have no ball and chain. Nobody's telling me what to do. But you find that real estate is something that in my understanding is something that you'll want to do forever really because you'll always want to have I've been a broker for 10 years I'm always going to want to have my real estate license because it's fun when you're working with people you like like when you get to pick the kind of current clients you want to be around that's when it's fun again make sense so you, and, and my clients understand me they know I like to travel so I tell them right up front and it's no problem you can access you can do your business from anywhere in the world you know I recently joined EXP I don't know if anybody here has heard of them, but it's been um, 30 days I've been with EXP, and I love it because of the virtualness of it. It's the way I've always worked anyway. I can work from anywhere in the world. So when you do listings, it's easier to do that than with buyers. With buyers, it's hard to work from anywhere in the world. There's a way to do it, but it's, very di it's more difficult. Reason nine, you can adopt the buyer. You get to adopt the buyer. A lot of people don't like this, this slide. Do mm -hmm. you all know what I mean by adopt the buyer? Yep. All right. And, and a lot of people have a, a uncomfortableness with this, but, but we talked about it, you know, Michael talked about it this morning, that most of the, the buyers will forget, I mean, most of your clients will forget you if you don't stay in touch with them. 87% is what they say. And so I always knew, I would always get calls and people would say, hey, could you list my house? And I'm looking up, I'm like, who is this guy? You know, or my, my assistant would, would say, hey, such and such called you, Derek, George, or whatever, would call you. And I'd have to look. It was a buyer that bought one of my listings. You know that's the easiest uh, sale in the world, by the way? A buyer that bought one of your listings? It's a three-question uh, close. Three questions. Like, for example, Derek George called me up. Uh, a guy that I had sold in my house. I looked up his name in the computer. So many people have done this. They say, uh, uh, so I called him back. I said, now, Derek, you called me about selling your house, didn't you? Yeah, I'm thinking about selling my house. Now, you know I sold that house before, did, don't you? Yeah, I know you sold my house before. Well, Derek, you know I can sell it again, don't you? Yeah, I think you can sell it again. Well, great. Well, all we have to do, I've already seen your house. It's not like I have to come out and look at it, you know. I sold it before. Oh, but we did a lot of upgrades. Okay, great. Well, let me come look at you. You don't have to sell. There's no selling involved. Does that make sense? Um, and then reason number 10 is that the seller listings are highly leveraged. What I want you guys to be doing, and I want you to be thinking about this, um, back in the old days, just like, like it, and I heard this from Kevin Cooper, a friend of mine, 
And he gave this analogy, and I, I really like it. So back in the old days when we used to fly, we used to travel, the first person that you would see when you got on the plane was the captain, right? He would greet you. Some of us don't even remember those days, but uh, the captain would greet you before you got on, and then he would go in the cockpit. They don't do that anymore, right? Um, and then the last person you saw before you got out of the plane was who? The captain. He would greet you, hey, thank you for flying with us, thank you, so on like that. Well, did you see the captain during the flight? Nowadays, do you see the captain during the flight, right? And so all I do is I educate my client to say, I'm the captain of the ship. We're flying your, we're flying your bird to Seoul. That's our destination, right? That's where we're going? We're going to Seoul, right? That's where we want to be. Okay, go, Seoul, great. Well, I'm going to be in the cockpit. There's a lot of stuff that I have to do to get this bird to Seoul. Make sense? Yep. Yeah, it makes sense. Well, guess what? You're not going to see me during the, during the journey because if you see the captain during the flight, we got a problem. It's, some, it's a big problem if we see the captain during the flight walking around, handing you peanuts and a glass of water, getting you a cocktail, maybe a beverage, a wine or something like that. You, we got a big, handing you a blanket? The captain? No. <laughs> captain don't do stuff. And so and they, they say, so, 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 and they understand the, the, the team concept. I've got a person that's going to take care of all your needs, I, but don't get it twisted. The captain was there the whole time. Even if you didn't see him, the captain was there. And they get used to not seeing you around. Yeah, it really is. Don't they get, they, and they get used to not seeing you around. And then actually when I call my clients now, they're like, Nolly, is there a problem? What's wrong? No, 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 I just want to check in on you. You know, no, no, no. Oh, yeah, that thing. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. We're good, we're good. So, but you actually train the client on how to relate with you. Does that make sense? And they actually appreciate it. So they actually will say things like, well, could you just have Barbara call me about it? You know, this is, this is God's honest truth. And I, and I say this jokingly. But it's true. I would t when I had a team, when I had my, my team rocking, I tell people all the time, I'm the dumbest one on the team. Because they always would want to call me to get things. And a lot, of, a lot of you guys make yourself, you, you make yourself very available, but you also make it to where um, people rely on you. If you have a team, like, and a team could just be you and an assistant. Okay? Some of you are at the point where you should have an assistant already, and you probably just don't, right? Because you just don't want to go to that step. But, but, but the reality is, I was always the dumbest one on the team. So when they called me about, hey, like I didn't even know what listings I had. Because I was, I was running my team at such a high level, I didn't, we would take t you know, five, six listings that week. I didn't know what, what all of them were. I had team members doing all that stuff. So people would call me like, hey, you know, you got a, a new listing on uh, at 101 Hickory Street. I said, oh, you, I, a new listing there? Tell me about it. And he said, yeah, it's your listing. I said, well, tell me about it. How many bedrooms does it have? And I start having them tell me about that listing, you know. They're like, man, we ain't calling you no more. We got, who knows about this? Oh, my assistant knows all about that one. I don't know anything about it. But I would make myself the dumbest one on the team because the reality is when you run a team and when you guys get to the point, how many of y'all have a team now? Not many. How many of you have an assistant, like somebody that helps you? Okay. So we'll, we'll, we'll get more into this if y'all have Q&A around this. But most of you should have an assistant. The personality profile of, of, of most real estate agents is not the same personality profile of an administrative assistant, okay? This is completely different personality profile. And so you, what you're gonna find is that you're doing stuff that you absolutely hate to do. And that's what makes the business not fun. Well, here's what I did. I was two years in the business and I said, there's some things about this business that are just not fun. And I gotta tell you guys, okay? And some of y'all are, are, are uh, older than others and some of y'all are younger than others, okay? You know, and some of y'all are right in the middle. It doesn't matter. There's going to be some things that you like to do, and there's going to be some things that you don't like to do. Why do the stuff that you don't like to do? What, what's the point? Why do it? You know, a lot of you guys are doing $12 an hour work, and I don't understand it. You need to give yourself a raise, okay? So here's what I did. Um, just, just a thought. Two years in the business, I said, you know, there's a lot of stuff that I'm doing that I don't like to do. And I just wrote it all out. What do I do on a listing? Okay, pick up the phone and talk to the seller that calls in don't like that. I don't like talking on the phone. So I'm going to delegate that out. Well, actually, I didn't, I, it, I didn't come about it this way. Here's what I did. I wrote it down from one to five. Every single step that I do, like um, everything, you write down everything, like um, call clients back when they call you, um, put up signs. I didn't like putting signs in the yards. I didn't like putting up lock boxes. I didn't like taking photos of my listings. So I made all this list of everything, not just the stuff I didn't like. I made a list of everything that I do. And I rated it from one to five. Five was like, I love it. One was, I hate it. 
And I decided I'm only going to do fours and fives. How many of y'all know that you can create your own reality? Do y'all know that? Do y'all realize that? You can. And so I said, I'm only going to do fours and fives. And if it's a one to three, I'm not going to do it, period. And that's how, I mean, I did that two years in the business. And that's how I've always done it, you know. As soon as something gets to the point where, now I do like to learn things to the point where I know them. Because I don't like to have an assistant do something that I don't know how to do. But I like to learn it to the point that I know it. But once I know it enough and it's not something that's in my skill set. See, some real estate agents love doing paperwork. Because they have a, a, a person. How many of y'all know about the DISC personality profile? Okay. So some of y'all do, some don't. You should study it. Learn, learn more about who you are so you can kind of gravitate to do what you like more than what you don't like. Um, some people like doing paperwork. And honestly... I know I've got some friends of mine that they have listing agents that go list. They don't even like meeting people like it's not their personality profile. Does that make sense? Well, well thanks so on. much for tuning in to this episode of the Success with Listings podcast. If you are serious about taking your real estate career to the highest heights, making more money and helping more clients while working less hours and spending more time with your family, be sure to get your copy of my free book, Triple My Listing, absolutely free at successwithlistings.com. Now, you want to be sure that you subscribe to the podcast and check out successwithlistings.com to get your copy of my free book. Hey, I'll see you on the next one.